Welcome, welcome to Earth Lounge. Lounge. So, what's Art Lounge? It's a space for artists, ones aspiring, or those who enjoy it, to come together and share ideas, thoughts, expression, and creation. So whether you're an illustrator, a writer, a musician, sculptor, comedian, dancer, architect, or someone who enjoys art in general, this space is for you. I'll be streaming daily with a mix of content, and in the near future, Hey guys, welcome back to Drawing Basics. Still working out the kinks with this uh, a streaming. <laughs> so I do cut off uh, the audio at some point when, when I'm not supposed to, just trying to understand the, the software better. Anyways, um, with that said, I wanted to do a little review over the past few days, like what we were doing. Um, just to go back a little bit. So this is one that was pretty good. And we were talking about midtones, the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Three of um, the shading um, principles you have to remember. So when you're working on it, you start off with the highlights, just doing like a, a light layer. And then you move on to the midtones, depending on where your light source is. And then you do the shadows according to the light source as well. And over here, we were talking about how sometimes you'll see the reflective light. And that is light that's bouncing off on an object or even like the surface that the object is sitting on that creates a little bit of like a light, uh, a highlight on the object itself. So you'll see that from time to time and keep an eye out for it. Um, and also just how important it is to just practice this, not just for shading purposes, but to have a little bit more control with the pencil. Um, you know, you want to be able to create these gradations without having to like press really hard and just in general, know or have like more of an instinctive uh, reaction when it comes to switching between gradations. So from like your highlights, your midtones to your shadows, it will be a lot easier for you as you get better and better. And that carries over into like drawing the figure, you know, whenever you're sketching out, for example, the figure itself, you want to make sure that you're doing it somewhere in the, like the highlight range, as far as like the strength of you pressing down on a paper. And then as you build up, you want to be able to just go further and further up so that you could define the figure a little bit better. Um, so yeah, just all that carries over. It, it's a good warm up. It's actually kind of mindless, right? You don't really have to think about much. You just have to remember these three tones, the highlights, midtones, and shadows as you're doing it. And if you carry around like a little drawing pad, like I showed you guys previously, something like this, you know, something small, um, a little less, a little bit less than the size of your hand. You could fit it in your pocket. It could fit it into your book bag. 
Uh, I highly recommend just carrying it around with you. And whenever you have like time, if you're on public transportation or something, you just sit there and uh, sketch a little bit. Do these like basic shapes. You could you could do like practicing the circle as well. The benefit about doing that and then trying to uh, challenge yourself. Like and this is just one example of where the light source is. You could try to challenge yourself and draw a light source coming from a different direction and see if you could emulate that as well. Um, let's see what else was there. Yeah, and there is this one right here, which we did yesterday, which is pretty important. Um, your seven head figure. And just seeing how this, the head measurement goes into, into um, the measurement of the, the figure itself. So from the chin down to the chest, that's one head, not accounting the head itself. Then from the chest down to the waist, that's two. Then from the waist down to the groin, groin area, that's three. Then from the groin area down to where your knee is, that's four. And then from the knees down to like, probably like where your shins are, uh, that's five. And then from that down to like where your feet are, that's six and seven in total. Um, yeah, and that's something that is the pretty much standard you know there's also the eight head measurement which is uh you know the the lake area is a little bit longer i would say like this part right here uh would also account for another head um and at some point i'll probably do the eight head as well but uh, for now this is just a standard one it's good practice for you to just get used to seeing the measurements this way, practicing. It's one thing to, you know, this is something I mentioned previously as well, it's like one thing to just know these rules, know these like standards or whatnot. And another thing to be able to practice it with your hand, you know, being able to just, what is in your mind, uh, put it down onto the paper as well. That's another thing to practice. So really important to do it i'd say spend 15 minutes every day doing this and eventually you won't have to think about it and it'll be a lot easier like i could remember when i was drawing the figure i just didn't know where to start or how to actually go about making sure that the figure is proportionate but once i learned these standard rules you know i was able to play around with it later change it exaggerate it whatever to kind of like an achieve, achieve like whatever goal that I'm looking for. And it just made it less intimidating. You know, that's something that um, drawing the figure in these like basic shape forms really helps. And then, you know, for this example, I drew it with a little bit more pressure, but if you were to do it lightly, adding on details, you know, changing, adding muscles and definition, that becomes easier as well. You already have yourself framework like we were talking about like structure wise these are your beams you're going to start laying in the bricks within the uh, the boundaries of the beams to make sure that everything is uh, stable right so it's the uh, it's the same idea here you're just these are the beams and then once you start putting in the definitions it's going to look right because it's proportionate and it's within the arm itself you're not just abstractly drawing a muscle and hoping that it makes proportional sense um, so yeah there's that and also just to quickly go over this as well we got the cylinder shape right in the most basic one that's you could see that it's like pretty much everywhere even like the body itself like the chest area it's just one big cylinder and then that's when you start once you're able to draw it more you understand that shape then you just have to see how it's shaped depending on what body part so like the forearm the leg is the same right you got it starts off wide at the top and then tapers down towards the bottom just the same way as it is here it starts off wide the forearm and then tapers off towards like the wrist area same thing for the leg it starts out pretty wide so your calf muscles are and then it tapers off towards the bottom and even with the thigh, it's the same idea. It's just like slanted a little bit. Like if you were to just cut the cylinder shape, let's just do a quick little cut. 
cut here it's the same idea it's cylinder shape and just for you know fitting it into the body into the mannequin you kind of slice it off to 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 yeah to fit it in um, but it's still a cylinder shape really so um yeah it's pretty much it just to summarize some of the stuff that we went over um i'm gonna do more examples of how the cylinder shape really helps building the body and whatever um whatever gesture that you want it to be in um and it also really helps if you were like, let's say if you're looking at something, and this is what I'm gonna try to do real quick here. If you're looking at an example and it's really big, but you wanna be able to like fit it in within like a small area of the sketchbook, these rules also really help. Because once you establish the head size for whatever it is, if it's like a really small piece, then the rest of the body, you know, is gonna be according to that head size that you drew not the one that's on the reference so once once you get these principles it really does help and carry over into just even working from your imagination so with that said let's do like a quick little example of how beneficial this is here i'm gonna start off with the circle add the cup shape depending on what angle so in this example he's kind of like looking up And it's like a three-fourths view. So it helps with the crosshair in the middle. Add a little ear there. And then from there, just quickly. Do like... Also, we talked about yesterday about like doing stick figures just so that you don't get bogged down by detail before you fit the um, fit the figure within the limits that you want it to be in. So in this case, we want to make sure that it fits in this little space right here. I want to be able to just fill up the page as much as possible before moving in. Uh, moving on to like the next page. <laughs> so quick little a diamond shape for the hand. The hand being about three fourths the size of the head. You want to make sure that it's not huge or bigger than the head. Then we got like the waist. So this is the benefit if you're just starting out and all you know how to draw is stick figures, you're in luck. This is a really great technique. It's like an old school technique of sketching out your subject before getting into the nitty gritty details. It just, it's such a huge time saver. If you get too bogged down by detail and it doesn't fit within the frame, it's discouraging. And a lot of people are just like get frustrated because oh, look at how much effort I put into this leg. Look at how much effort I put into the face. Now I have to erase it. Or the composition is gonna have to be compromised because I don't wanna erase it. So to solve that problem and not, have to deal with that frustration it's great to just sketch it out and as you as you can see i took the time to sketch out the stick figure and um now i could go into a little bit more detail
and just build from there. And as you could see, I'm really building cylinder shapes, you know, for the, for the shin area, cylinder shape. I'm using cylinder shapes to, again, lay the bricks, lay down the bricks. Don't need to jump into detail right away. This process kind of reminds me of the intro of uh, Westworld. When you see how it's like creating those artificial bodies. And it's just layering it on. It starts with the skeletal structure and then it layer layers those... Uh, I guess the muscles and then the skin and so forth. And this is kind of like what it is. You're just like doing it with a pencil and paper rather than actually like sculpting the figure out in that in that step by step process. And similar to sculpting as well, it's the same idea. You know, if you're learning, granted, on just like drawing, when you're just starting out, you're uh, you're learning these steps but then as you get really good you kind of just jump into um going straight for the breaks or the details even if you wanted to because you already know and you could your mind's eye is just so um well trained that it's it's a skipped process it's like tying your shoe right in that example, or it's like reading, you don't know, you don't have to like recite the alphabet every time to, to start reading again and remembering the letters, you just know them and you just go, you just read. It's the same idea with, with this, same idea with sculpting, playing music. These are all um, common principles that you find, which is really interesting. It's just kind of how our brain works. So as you can, you can see, after like doing these basic shapes, now I'm starting to go a little bit in more into detail and giving things more form, more shape, more definition. And then from here, you could just start defining it more connecting the joints together, adding the lines. You can give his calf more muscle. Just because now I can. Now I know it's in proportion and that it makes sense. And as you could see, the goal was to make sure that it fits into this small little area. So you could see how important it is to start out with like the, um, with the stick figure, because then you could really make sure and you're not fighting it later on. You can get into the fun part of like starting to shape it out and playing around with the body parts I really do enjoy doing these little warm-ups. There's something so fun about it. Kind of adding muscles here and there, fun. Definition for his bicep. Gonna connect. 
like the joints more. I will be switching over. I'm still trying to debate. Like I was looking through my sketchbooks the other day and I was like trying to see how well did I actually uh, use each page. And oh man, I was terrible at it. It's awful. I just uh, drew like one little face on one page that was like that big. And then I would just move on to the next page. It was just so, so wasteful. It's really bad. And I also noticed that a lot of the times I really tried to work on the anatomy from my imagination. And I think because it was just not coming out right, it was so unsatisfying to look at that I, I wanted to just move on to the next page instead of like, you know, looking at references, using books and stuff and drawing from that and learning all this stuff step by step. Like, I think I was just fighting it more with my imagination than having to be like, right, let me just sit down and get this, understand this, and then really it will be a lot more rewarding and fun knowing that it's like, it's coming out right. You know, the the style, the, um, you know, the poses and all that stuff is going to come later after that. So it's like, you know, don't waste time and get discouraged. Just take some time and like learn it. So yeah, I don't know if I'm actually, uh, I'm going to try to switch over to like a big, um, sketchbook or a bigger sketchbook in that way I could really fill up a really big page because this one is coming to an end. I'm kind of excited about that. I haven't an ended a sketchbook in a while. So it should be fun to just fill up every single page as much as possible and then move on to the next one. So I might revisit, I don't know, I might revisit like my old sketchbook and just fill up those pages to like make up for 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 such heresy <laughs> for, for ruining or just avoiding all those pages when they should have all been covered I kind of enjoy this I think what I'm gonna do is quickly use this pen and define it You guys are just tuning in you're not part of the live stream or if you are in the live stream post some um, experiences you've had what did you struggle with when you were first starting out drawing or any other uh, medium really like what was it that took you a while to accept and get used to or teach yourself after struggling with it for a while I would imagine it's kind of similar in music as well, you know, rather than first learning um, the different notes that you could play. The C, the D, the E, the F, all that stuff, like, rather than learning that, you're just constantly trying to work from your imagination and getting discouraged that it doesn't sound right or doesn't sound uh, good. And then finally caving and like learning all those notes and then using them to help you with your like imaginative process.
I also like doing this with the brush pen because I suggest you guys do this too. If, um, if you're studying, you're practicing this stuff and then use the brush pen to just, I guess, reiterate what you've learned for yourself. It's a little too long. His legs are a little too long. I think it's starting to fall into the eight body. I mean, eight, eight head body figure. Yeah, you know, you you took all this time to learn it. It's good to just trace it again and remember it even better. You know, you're like solidifying it more in your mind. And it's also training you how to use this medium and also to be careful with your lines. So it's like multiple disciplines at the same time. It's just such a good, I think it's a good habit. Okay. With that said, and this time I do have chat open, so I can look out if you guys do um, comment anything. It took me a little bit to get that set up properly. And just to show you guys an example of how this is just so similar to a cup shape. If you were to flip the glass upside down, and it was like a shorter one, like a shot glass. That would be like the, the hip area. But just see how quickly you're able to just uh, draw the torso using this shape. It's also good to practice it on this as well. Like I showed you guys the the circle example. Like this could be just another, you know, if you get bored practicing in that little pad of yours, shading the circle, you could do the same thing for the cylinder. It's a great exercise. You, you need both shapes. They're absolutely essential. So you could do that. Let's say the light source is coming from here so your mid-tone would be like here and as you can see i'm doing it in like layers right so we started out really light for the highlights and now we're gonna do the shadows Same thing for this guy. And this is going to be dark because it's being covered by the bottom of the cup, right? So this is going to be in the shadows. It really depends on like, it's probably lighter than that because the cup isn't really that low. Tones here and then shadows. And really, I would say, again, just to practice like the reflective light, I would leave like the end of it on the light side. Because let's say it's like leaning and there's like a, a table here, the light would come, come down to the table and then bounce off and hit the cup. here so just another fun way to let's just say it's like darker in there it's 
more so dark here. So there you go, there's like another shape you could play around with, practice your shading techniques on it. Just to fill up the page some more, I wanted to do another one here. Show you guys again how the cylinder shape can define the body. It's just the same way as it's twisting here. Get the angle right. And look at that. In no time. You already got like the, the body kind of sketched out, the figure sketched out. This is where the muscle would be, this is where the arm would start to develop. cylinder shape. As the exaggerated pose, there's like no balance really. It's kind of like tipping over, trying to prevent it by like arching his back towards the back. But yeah, you guys can see how just from that little cup example, you start building out in the, the body. It's a quirky, weird pose. I'll probably come back and fill in all these other little um, little box openings here and here. Most definitely up here as well. I could do it still. It's 
or it's like a leg example. Or cylinders. Now, when you're drawing the leg, you have to keep in mind that despite them being cylinder shape, they do vary in size. Like the from the knee down to the ankle, it's not the same width as it is with the thigh. You have to make sure that the thigh is actually wider. That that cylinder, when it comes to drawing the um, the leg, that cylinder is actually wider than the other cylinder, starting from the knee down to the ankle. You don't want it to look stumpy. You don't want it to be like, you know, um, a cylinder on top of another cylinder. It's just gonna, it's, it's not gonna look right. And that's the whole point of making sure that when you're tapering it at the bottom, uh, as it continues, it continues from that tapered part of the leg. So, we get the thigh right here. And this is where the knee starts down to the ankle. Also mentioned this in another stream. I think it's important to practice all these body parts. You don't want to get really good at just drawing the face, which is what I was actually doing. I was focusing so much on drawing the face over and over again that when it came down to like other parts of the body, they were atrocious looking, or they just looked really basic, or um, not proportionally correct. Or didn't have any definition so when it came down to like drawing the foot i didn't know where the arch was where it started where the end it and like how to taper off the like towards the toes i didn't know any of that stuff so when you're practicing drawing you should practice well when you're practicing the figure you should practice all that so that means don't hide the hand behind the back practice how to draw the hand over and over until you get it and don't put it in the pockets. That could come later. You know, once you draw the hands really well, you could um, focus more on the pose and um, being more creative with the poses for the characters that you're drawing. But for now, Yeah, just uh, try to practice all of them as much as possible. So pretty, it looks pretty simple, right? Two cylinder shapes. And just to demonstrate it even more in a more simple form. Top of the thigh. Cup. And then from the knee down to the ankle, another cup. Just with a more narrow base. Say even the same. Let's see where else can we fit this in. Say the same for the arm as well. Start 
start out. I like to start out with like a circle for the bicep, but we're gonna do cup shape, so. Here it is. This is the cup shape for the bicep area. And this is the cup shape for the forearm. So if you guys are in chat, if you're just tuning in, uh, what would you say is the most difficult part of the body that you struggled with or you're currently struggling with it that's taking you some time to learn? You can post it in chat, talk about it. I could cover it in the next stream and show you some pointers on where you could improve it or how you can go about getting better at it. So again, two cylinder shapes, relatively the same size. Now the benefit of reference, right? You could go back after you drew the figure multiple times, you could go back and you could be like, how many heads were there in... Where was it? Yeah. This page right here. How many heads were there in the arm? So from like the shoulder down to where... Um, your wrist begins it's about a head and a half but really if you were to measure it from like below the shoulder right it would be a head one head plus another so two heads and they're about the same size really and you could also check it with a ruler right you could just be like all right this is how big it is below the shoulder and look at how big it is when you're comparing it to the wrist it's about the same size so really the shoulder adds on to this other half or as you can see in this example two heads and then the leg is two heads all the way down to like the foot area like a little bit before the foot ends. And this measurement is really more for, I think, the eight head, eight head body. Um, as opposed to the seven head body, because the seven head body, the thigh pretty much fits into like one head size. And I will be doing the eight head measurement so as you guys could see from here oh well, it's like it's about the same if you were to really draw the full thigh but because we're just like slicing it to make sure that it fits onto the um onto the waist or the groin area rather it, it turns into like a one head size but yeah, I think um, I'll do another stream with um, doing both the seven head and the eight head body right next to each other. And you guys can see the difference really between the two. It will be a lot clearer then than having to flip back and forth. And in the, in the future, I'll, um, I'll be making the announcements for you guys to, to help you out with these um, anatomy pages and stuff. So that should be fun. Can we fit another example within this page? 
guess we could do another one. Another example of the arm right here. This is the forearm. It's an upside down cup. And then we got the bicep area. Other cylinder shape, but I kind of added the shoulder there. But really, if you were to summarize it, kind of looks like that. Be like this ball that's kind of attached to another cylinder shape that makes the shoulder and the bicep area. For the arm, it's a little bit different. It doesn't taper off as much towards the base when it comes to the upper part of the arm or the bicep area. It doesn't taper off like it does with the leg. With the leg, and it really, um, as you could see from like the thigh down to like the knee, it really tapers off. Whereas here, it's different. It's pretty much, uh, depending on how much muscle he has, it would just be a bulge rather than tapering towards towards the elbow. But the tapering starts for the forearm, and that's crucial. You don't, kind of looks weird when you don't taper off like the forearm area. It looks like he has tree stumps for forearms, or she, that applies. And even more so for a female figure, you, you want it to have more like delicate features and you want to make sure that it tapers off even more so for it for the female forearm. But yeah, when you're doing the arm, it doesn't taper off for the bicep area, but tapers off for the forearm. Whereas the leg, it tapers off for the both, the, the, the thigh and the leg, the, from the knee down to the ankle. And we do one more example at the top. Let's do like a right knee. Right angle knee, I mean. Same exact thing, tapering it off. Now this would be where the knee is. It's gonna do like a dashed line. See how quickly you could just draw this like, the skeletal structure by just remembering how I just need to draw a cylinder shape and I already got it down. And then from there, you can start adding in more detail. fill in this page sometime later. Again, shouldn't we? Should we? Should we not? I guess we could do like a quick foot over here just to show you guys um, 
what the foot look like as a basic shape. Well, this one's a little bit more complicated because it doesn't really fit too much of like a, a basic shape thing. What you could do is you could do like a cub shape, right? And then add to that cup a cone. So you start out with the cup, add a cone. And that could be like the basic shape for the for the foot. And then from there you could just shape it out to be to resemble more of like a foot. Could add the heel. And the heel really is like the cub shape. It's not so much where the cone is. That's where the heel is. There's like a dip in there and it comes out finally towards the, the toes. And I found out to be like the easiest way to draw it correctly. So just to show it again. You got the cup shape. And then from there, you just add a cone that's facing downwards more. And it should be on the same line. So if he's standing, right this is like the floor you got to make sure that the cone shape is angled towards the floor on the same line where the heel is and then from there you add the toes and bam you got yourself a foot Now, this is just a basic form. I really do recommend um, studying it. And I'll show you guys more in detail what it looks like. And this is kind of just like a straight camera shot. Where it's just like there's no there's no angle to it it's not for sure and but just a quick example of how you could draw the foot correctly I could do another one right here let's say this is like the ankle area now this one is a little bit on a perspective side. But the principle is pretty much the same. You draw the cup shape and then depending on the direction you want the foot to be facing, you add the cone shape to it. So. In this case, it's kind of like a three-fourths view, more towards you as the viewer, rather than away. This is where like the big toe is. And remember, the big toe is always on the inside of the foot, not outside. That's something to remember. And the same thing goes for thumbs. 
think sometimes people get a little confused about that, or at least I was getting a little confused when I was learning the anatomy. If I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't pay attention to the fact that thumbs. I mean, once you hear it, it's kind of obvious. But when you're drawing, I think it might be a little bit different. But thumbs are always on the inside, on the outside. If it's open, th uh, open palm, like if his palm is um, facing up, then the thumbs are on the outside. But if they're laying, if they're straight down, you know, resting on, on the leg. Excuse me. Um, yeah, they're they're facing inwards towards the body. They did a decent job here. Still like to like overlap some things here and there, but that's pretty good in terms of covering up as much of the page as possible. Let's go on to the next page. Actually, let's take a look at the time here, guys. I think this might be... Yeah, this is, uh, it's gone, it went over what my time uh, limit was initially for this, so. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. I will be back again tomorrow. Same time, same place, teaching you more. Um, basic figure drawing, basic um, ideas of how you could draw all the different parts of the body uh, with more examples. If you guys enjoyed this content, hit the subscribe button, follow the social media, and post any questions and comments you got. I will, uh, I'll write you back or I will address it in the stream. We'll talk about it in the stream and I uh, will see you soon. And stick around. In 15 minutes, I'm going to take a quick 15 minute break. Um, we're going to come back and do comics. So I'll be doing another panel from Conan the Barbarian. John Buscema's uh, amazing work. So I'll see you there. Welcome, welcome to our...